Hey, you know what I can't do? It just drives Haley crazy. So, you know when you heat something up in the microwave, or you know, like you heat up a coffee or something? I can't let that thing go down to zero. Like, if you ever look at a microwave in my house, it's always set to one or two seconds. I can't let it go. To I leave it to two. You notice that, yeah. It's like, it's an internal game that I play to like try to get as close to one as possible so I don't have to hear the beat. Yeah. Hey, welcome to the closing beat, everybody. How we doing today? Happy, happy Wednesday to you. Uh, boy, we got a lot to cover today. Welcome to our show. Uh, it's called the, the Closing Beat Stock Market Update Show. We do all kinds of good stuff here. We're financial advisors uh, at Jazz Wealth Managers. Hope you'll check us out there, uh, jazzwealth.com. We're not currently taking customers right now because we're building out a bunch of cool stuff. Hope to be back up and joining you soon, but uh, we appreciate you hanging out, and uh, hopefully you'll hit the subscribe button because we're almost to 100,000 subscribers and uh, that means something, uh, so we appreciate that one there. Hey, we do have some good FinTips videos for you this week as well. Every other day at 1 o'clock, we post a video. It's a recorded video on YouTube there. We did, uh, well, would have been today. Uh, sneaky trick to avoid taxes in your IRA. And then Friday, we're going to talk about FIFO versus LIFO. Ugh, everybody gets this one wrong, so we're going to cover that and explain uh, how that works and when you want to set that. What, like You can choose how you want that to calculate. Uh, we want to talk about those, make it be, maybe make you a little more efficient. Uh, in our research site, we did uh, talk about the market bubble. People are searching market bubble more so than ever. You can go on Google uh, Trends to check that out. And we talked about how the performance of the markets do, uh, behave going forward when those trends start to spike, went all the way back to 2004 when Google would give us all that data. So uh, you can check that one out. As far as the uh, stock market here today, are you kidding me? It's the second time. I'm going to show you. I'm just going to show you the notes from Jazz thing. If you're not a customer, you know, you're going to get a little sneak peek here. But this is what we send out every weekend. Uh, these are all the previous ones. You can actually go in our portal and see all the previous um, uh, notes from Jazz. Every weekend I send out an email. I go through everything, right? We talk about all kinds of good stuff. I always start with the basics. Then we get really geeky as we go in there a little bit further. But I want to show you this one chart right in here. If uh, maybe it'll, eh, it's not really any bigger. Uh, if you take a look here, we said, you know, President's Day is not known for being an amazing week. Not that it's bad. It's just it kind of does a whole lot of nothing. Slight loss, right? Well, yesterday, the stock market closed within three one hundredths of a percentage point from where it normally closes the Tuesday after President's Day, uh, the holiday on Monday. What happened today? Again, uh, we two one hundredths of a point within closing exactly where it does. What does that tell you, right? It's that everybody says, oh, you can't look back to try to predict the forward performance and everything. Yeah, when emotion is involved, right? The stock market's going to do what it's always just done unless there's emotion involved. So the real question every day is, is there some emotion in the market that will drive things one way or the other? Is there stimulus? Is there maybe elect, uh, election type things? Now nah, that's all past us, right? Is there earnings on some of the big stocks? Is there some news, some big catastrophe, chaos, whatever? No, right? The last two days, there's been nothing, right? There's nothing out there. So the stock market goes, I have nothing, no reason to get emotional. Therefore, I'll just do what I normally do. And you know what it normally does? A slight loss, basically a flat day. You look at the stock market today, it was perfect. It was right spot on there. The average minus 0 0.01, we lost minus 0 0.03. Uh, fascinating, right? Just love, love, love to see that. Only 40% of the time is this Wednesday positive uh, following President's Day. So you got to know that everybody knows what the market is supposed to do. This is not rocket science. I didn't just pull this out of thin air. We all know what it's supposed to do. The next question is, is there some emotion that would push us outside of the norm? And the answer was no. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Will there be a little emotion uh, or not? So we'll, we'll be sure to talk about it and keep going. I just find that stuff fascinating. I don't know. Let's take a look at the stock market here today because we got a lot to cover. All right, the Dow sitting at about uh, almost 4%, uh, nearing 4% year to date there. Today, if you're looking inside the Dow, you got Home Depot, uh, one of the bigger gainers. Hopefully, it's waking back up again. It's sort of losing, lost some steam like Amazon there for a while. You also have Verizon. Verizon was the biggest gainer in the Dow. Warren Buffett's uh, company's got about 146 million shares, a uh, big participator there. Awesome. I know people were just asking about that pullback. Thank you, Mr. Buffett, for getting things to bounce. That's a big move for Verizon, by the way, gaining 5% in a day. Uh, so pretty interesting there. If you go over to the NASDAQ, it's about 6.3% well, 6 year to date. 
Um, not a whole lot here. It's kind of a mixed day. Apple's losses breaking below the 50 days uh, moving average there offset Amazon's gains and the Chinese names were kind of split too. You got JD.com up 3% uh, percent, and then you had Baidu down about 5%. That one's super extended anyway. So those kind of things just sort of made the NASDAQ uh, an off day today. Not a whole lot to get excited about. You got the S&P 500 uh, flat. Just awesome to see that performance. I, I just get so excited with that. Uh, it's about 5% gains year to date there. Uh, Verizon and the banks were your big ones today. We already talked about Verizon there, but if you want to look over at the banks, Wells Fargo gets the go-ahead from the Fed that maybe they're going to be allowed to start taking new customers there. They're growing their asset management business and, and uh, getting that cap lifted, which has been on them for, I think, two years now, uh, maybe a touch longer than that. Uh, but that's good news there for them, and especially if you own it, finally starting to participate. It's been the dragger there out of the big names in the financial space. Uh, you got NVIDIA and the semiconductors taking the day off. Uh, Micron uh, down 2% on the day. Texas Instruments, these had been good performers. They just pull them back a little bit. No big deal. Everybody's cool with that. And that's pretty much what you have as far as the stock market's concerned today. Uh, not too bad. Let's go over to the sector breakdown here and uh, take a look. Did I even pull it up? I'll go like this. There we go. Let's get a look at some of the sectors here today. Not a whole lot to cover if we're going to look at individually there. Energy ranking near the top of the list again today, looking really good. Uh, the XLE, let's go inside of it real quick here. But if we go inside the XLE, you can see a lot of those names are sitting in the same position as the sector as a whole. Good performing names today. Uh, a lot of really good stuff there. Not, a, not as good as the other day, right? But still pretty good there. Uh, what I want to show you here is I want to look, you got XLE um, just killing it, right? It's up 28% in the last three months. We're going to go over here, use our little tool. I think we're about ready to launch this sucker. Uh, we're going to say XLE being, I'll even just do 25%. 25% over a three-month period, rolling three-month period. I'll look just 25 years. That's That should be enough. Uh, 26 is fine. It doesn't go back that far. But if we take a look inside of here, what do we have? Is it rare? Is it odd? for the XLE to actually gain that much in a three month period. So XLE greater than 25% over a three month period, looking back as far as we can. Okay, cool. So what it says here is uh, gains more than 25% in a three month period, 12 times in the last 26 years, which is as far back as we can go anyways. Uh, performance going forward, the average performance loss of about 2%, median is a slight gain there, positive about 50% of the time. What I find interesting here, Here's the most current one. It's up 27.65% just off the chart there. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to go like this. Ah, I'm going to go back to this page. Oh, it's still off there. My bad. Uh, it's just going to be off. Anyway, so uh, about 27% of the time. Look at these other ones here, right on my page here. Gains 32%, 28%, 25%. What's going on there? Well, you look back in the previous window, they were down big. Energy was down big there. What does that tell you about these 25 and 30% gains? Those were recoveries. So energy has its biggest moves when it's recovering from a big decline right? Well, look forward going uh, forward towards that performance. You get these little pullbacks. You get underperformance going forward. So I'm not saying, right, uh, the fact that this fell 25% there uh, as we came into the end of uh, last year there, uh, that's weighing the average, right? So you know the average is a little bit skewed because of that large one large decline. But other than that, you can see you have basically average performance going forward. So those of you that are looking at the energy sector and going, I see it. I love it. I'm excited about it. You don't want to chase it, right? You, you want to actually see a pullback. Give, it, give us something here that we can sink our teeth into. Um, other than that, the best time to buy energy is when it's beaten down, not when it's showing momentum. That's not true for every sector there. So I thought that was really, really cool, something I wanted to take a look at with you today. Um, if we go through the other sectors, can we do that? Let's just do that real quick. We'll go through uh, a couple of the others because i got some things I want to share with you here today. Uh, I'm going to go over here. There you go. Tech ranks at the bottom and an obvious loser here today. Not by much, but still it stands out as the obvious loser to the downside. That's going to be Apple. So we go inside a tech here. You can see it's obviously been very, very strong. It's okay that it's pulling back there just a little bit. Apple breaking down below the 50-day moving average. NVIDIA pulling back as well. This is finally loading. There we go. Uh, and so look at what's happening today. Apple, NVIDIA, your other uh, semiconductor stocks, those were all the ones that dragged you down today. Oops, wrong one. Looking at uh, PayPal. We're not drunk. 
There you go. PayPal's been extended here in the short term. Look at how extended that is. So very normal for this to pull back, and it started doing that, dragging on the overall sector today. It's one of the bigger losers today as well. Um, also, I want to look at um, Akamai. Where was that in my? Did I miss it? Let's just sort this way. Nope, can't do it that way. Um, I want to find Akamai today. Yeah, that stood out to me as one of the, it was the biggest gainer on the day. Quick reversal there, right? So we were just saying the other day where this has a big move to the downside, you let it settle down, then participate. That might be giving you the green light there if uh, if today holds up, right? I mean, so it's a great reversal. Closed at highs of the day, so not too bad there. Also want to take a look at healthcare real quick. Um, as far as sector performance, it's kind of middle of the pack uh, for the year. So, not, nothing to really write home about or get too excited about. But if we take a look inside of healthcare, what do we have today? We got a nice reversal day in Merck. There's your stamp, right? We've been waiting for that one to pull back or to start showing a bottom there. Love it. Finally seeing that one gain uh, about 2% on the day. Good reversal there. I like that one on uh, Merck's. Finally nice to see that one. And I know uh, you guys are playing around with UNH as well. That one gave you a little bit of a bounce today. Not amazing. A little bit of a bounce on UNH hovering right around the 200-day moving average. And uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Looking back at the sectors here, communication services right smack in the middle. What's going on there? Did you see our class yesterday, our closing beat? We talked about Twitter. Twitter being extended here. Not normal for it to be at these prices. We shared all that data with you yesterday and went through that one. So hopefully that is something that grabbed your attention there uh, because it was worthwhile. All right. We're going to do a little bit of a lesson today, uh, and then we'll wrap up the other stuff uh, sort of quickly. A lot of questions lately about uh, people wanting to invest in vices, right? Generally known as alcohol and tobacco, cigarettes and alcohol, one, one way or the other. Uh, the hard stuff, the beers, your cigarettes, uh, anything related to that, vaping, anything that these guys are exposed to. Uh, some of the goofy stocks as well. Um, now, that's what it normally includes, uh, but you can also include um, uh, like dining out pleasure foods, going out to eat. Uh, some people do that. Um, you, the habit of eating junk food, right? uh, guilty. Uh, so that could be included in there as well. So what I did is I put together a list of the performance of what is known as vices. Now, what I also did is I included the ETF in here, vice, right? So that way, if you felt like you wanted to include that stuff, you had somewhere to look. But otherwise, we broke it down by individual companies here as well. You got your tobacco companies. You got your beers and wines. You got your hard liquors in there as well. And then you've got vice, which includes anything from your cannabis to your strip clubs, um, to be blunt with you there. All right. So what we're going to do, take a look at the performance. So where's all the action going here? If you're looking at individual stocks, uh, Boston Beer is just killing it, right? Over the last one month, year to date so far, and over the last one year, it's doing a lot better than its competitors. So what we're going to do is take a look at uh, old Boston Beer versus Budweiser, which is now uh, InBev. Uh, so here we go. If you look over the last year, it's clearly beat it. That's the place to be, even on pullbacks there. If we look over the last five years, go out a little bit further, it's uh, annualized, oops, there you go. Annualized returns are still much better. Granted, look, it's had this great run up here recently, but if you look over five years, annualized returns are great. If you look over 10 years, it still beats Anheuser-Busch. So uh, clearly that's your leader in both good times and bads. Uh, it's also more volatile, so something to keep uh, in mind there. All right, if we go over to your spirits, that's going to be three names, Brown Foreman, Constellation Brands, and Diageo. Now, I thought Diageo would be the better performer. I, I just, you know, they're more public. They've got the brand recognition. They've got the uh, celebrity brands, of course, that they've done with Aviation Gin and many others. Um, but here's what we've got. So out of the hard spirits, your clear winner is Constellation Brands, maybe because of some of their other exposures there. Um, and also Brown Foreman's a little bit different there. But uh, anyways, you got Constellation Brands being the big winner there. If you look over the last 10 years, annualized returns, uh, better off being there than Brown Foreman, than Diageo. I might argue that Diageo, I don't know if I'm biased here or something. I just feel like that's one that's that's got a better grip in the right now uh, versus over the last uh, 10 years or so. But uh, that's what you have going on there. We're going to go over to cigarettes now, traditionally known as cigarettes there, Altria and Philip Morris and British American Tobacco, one that usually gets left out. If we look over to last year here, take a look at those, those returns. Ugh, 
not really great. Hasn't been a good time to be in this industry of the vices there. If we look over the last five years, it's not much better, right? You wouldn't have at least lost a lot with Philip Morris, but Altria and British American Tobacco, not looking too good there. You could look at this and say, is that a discount, right? Maybe look over the last 10 years. This thing is pulling back. We've got every name pulling back here. If you did do that, and for some reason these were attractive to you, what would you do? We're just playing hypotheticals here. If you look at these uh, tobacco companies, you go, all right, that's not great performance. It's, it's not amazing. But if I'm going to participate, I'm going to look for the best yield, right? I want to be rewarded for holding on to something that's underperforming if I decide, you know, you want to jump into something like that. All right, so here's what we got. Uh, we're going to take a look at their overall dividend yields. It's probably going to go on a separate screen. And then we're going to change it back. I got to go back over here real quick. There we go. Here's your dividend yield. So bottom half of your screen there, we've got each company ranked by their dividend yield right now. Philip Morris is going to rank at the bottom there. British American Tobacco slightly in second place. Looks like Altria is going to be your better spot to go. So if we go back to performance, if you're looking at something like Altria, you're getting the stock that's performing the best over the long term and just for fun. Uh, second place over the short term here, over the last one year, so not too bad there. It's ranking about second place there, but not too bad over the last 10 years. It ranks the best, and it's also giving you the highest yield, right? So you think, okay, maybe that's the stock I'm interested in if I'm focused on that yield. It's a decent yield there, and they are consistent in terms of paying that uh, dividend yield. So I thought that was kind of interesting there. Um, and then moving on to Vice, uh, we're going to go over here real quick prepared a little too much for you. If you say, I don't, I don't want to do all that analysis. I just want to dive into the uh, ETF. I'll just take vice as a whole. I'm okay with that. I'll invest in tobacco, alcohol. Some people uh, are against that. That's okay. Uh, we're going to look at the top 10 biggest contributors. So maybe you say, I'm going to buy the ETF, or maybe you just go inside of it and hand pick off some of the good performers or the ones that are pulling back. Here are the biggest contributors year to date. And I actually plotted out off to the right your top 10 biggest contributors. You know about Boston Beer right now. There's a lot of names that maybe uh, piques your interest you want to take a look into. Penn National's pretty big headline stock. That would be gambling. So it takes yourself out of there. They even count gaming and entertainment like video games as a vice. Okay, probably fine. Here's some of that eating out like I talked about. Your Del Taco is in there. You've also got DraftKings, Wingstop, some of the bigger performers as well, and Chewy, right? So uh, here's a way to go inside and look at that. You could also say, uh-oh, I see those underperformers as well. So what we did today was just break it all down into chunks, but you could also just take a look in here and say, all right, what's the weighting? How do they hold these positions and could I just replicate that maybe by creating my own mix of those. And so that's something I just kind of wanted to dive into uh, very briefly, uh, obviously very, very briefly. We'll move on to new highs and lows for the day uh, and see what we have there. Tractor Supply, TSCO is the ticker symbol, cool little breakout, uh, good volume there today, lots of action. They've done well by um, not having sales. I think I talked about this a while ago. Their most recent approach has been to say, let's just not have sales, let's sell everything at a premium little sale here and there, but not as big as we used to. That's obviously helping their bottom line, doing well. JP Morgan, one of the banks that did well today, banks continue to, to do well there. And I started looking through all the other ones. Uh, Fitboy or Fifth Third Bank, Fifth Third Bank looking the same, gives you a little different exposure if you're really trying to break out your um, banking uh, exposure and not be all in the big banks. You know what I'm saying. Uh, you got Chubb, interesting pattern. Got a recent breakout failure that then reversed and we're consolidating near highs here. Kind of interesting there and a good day for them as well. And Johnson Controls, I just thought this was interesting because it broke above these highs and refuses to look back, right? Today was a really strong day. It closed at highs. I thought that was kind of attractive there. If you own it, that's something I think you definitely want to be excited about. If we do stocks in the news, should we? Yeah, we're going to do stocks in the news. Uh, Amazon stock was higher. New York Attorney General filed a lawsuit uh, about not adequately pr adequately protecting workers during the COVID uh, initial like main meltdown of COVID there. Um, you got to call it COVID-19, by the way. Did you see that? You're not, no, you're, you're, not, al you're not allowed to say, you're going to love this. <laughs> you're not allowed to say China virus or Wuhan virus anymore. Canceled. Joe Biden. Yeah, executive order, man. It's not not allowed. You're not allowed to name a virus. So West Nile virus is out too. You can't. 
You can't name the place. Oh, I'm dead serious. Yeah, no, I'm dead serious. <laughs> I just thought, I just came to my head, I thought about that. Uh, anyways, uh, Amazon, the shares didn't really get bugged by that, and that's unfortunate. You it, get going, right? Amazon, I know a lot of people are holding it. Let's do some work, Amazon, let's, let's make this happen. All right, you got Shopify pulling back about, uh, well, 3% on the day there. Uh, beats on earnings, revenues came in better than expected. Uh, revenue growth up 94% year over year. Guidance was where people were frustrated because it wasn't the most eloquent way of giving guidance. They said, we continue to grow rapidly. That's it. They were asked about guidance and the guy, well, we continue to grow rapidly. What does that mean, right? Imagine these analysts looking for numbers and, and stuff they can geek out on and they get, we continue to grow rapidly. Help us out. So I think that was one of the main reasons there uh, that it probably caught people's attention. Uh, Boyd Gaming, maybe call this a vice here as well. Uh, down 3% on the day. Uh, Boyd Gaming beats on earnings by $0.05 cents revenues as expected. I think it's just a little profit-taking uh, on that because otherwise that they're doing pretty good um, now. Uh, anyways, Lazy Boy down 5% on the day. Lazy Boy, they beat on earnings by $0.04. Cents. Revenues as expected raised guidance there. I didn't catch uh, too much there about uh, that was negative or any guidance or anything. Um, they raised their dividend as well at some point. I forget what they raised it to, but I don't know. I didn't think that was that bad. Uh, and Solar Edge, all in all, kind of a flat day. Volatile during the day there, but solar, sort of a flat day. Raised their guidance going forward. They obviously beat on earnings. They're killing it. These, these guys are just killing it right now. Revenues were as expected. That might have been part of the reason you didn't see too much uh, excitement there. And uh, yeah, that's it for stocks. Well, that's pretty much it for stocks in the news. I right, want to take a quick look at upcoming earnings here, if we can. Uh, as far as those earnings, Hormel, remember that? They just bought the peanuts. Uh, uh, what is it? Planner's Peanuts, the one with the little character. Uh, so that might get talked about. That's earnings tomorrow. Uh, you got Marriott. Earnings coming up as well. Uh, expecting 11 cents. Really sad story there. Their CEO... Um, earlier this month says, I'm going to just take some time off, you know, got pancreatic cancer or something, dies. I think he died yesterday. I, I mean, that was quick. Uh, anyways, you got Newmont coming up there as well. If you like the gold miners, I know a lot of you looking at those gold miners. That's coming up there. Maybe a reason to get this thing off the bottom. Or what would you do if it sold off hard? On, on earnings, right? Would you be excited about that? Uh, waste management and Walmart. Tell you what, waste management, right at the 200-day moving average. Uh, the problem is this is the least volatile quarter. So you got to know these things if you're looking at playing earnings. For waste management, here's a little lesson for you. Um, their busy season is over the summer. Second and third quarters. They're not reporting that. They're reporting fourth quarter. It's the least volatile earnings uh, report for them in terms of how the stock moves um, out of all the quarters. Second and third quarter is where all the action is at uh, because we use more trash over the summer. There's more residential trash, there's more construction trash, and uh, that's when they're more active. They make more money during that time period there. Um, so waste products for them are big over the summer. I, I, you know, it's one of those things. You're like, I, do I use more trash over the summer? That's, that's kind of interesting there. Uh, but their revenues actually increase around that time. So that's where the volatility is because if they have a sharp increase in revenues during their busy season, obviously that's a good thing, but uh, you can actually see it. I was gonna try to pull it up for you. Uh, let's take a look, oh, here we go. Here's the waste management uh, revenue. So you see these little spikes and drops and spikes and drops, watch what happens. You go like this, watch the date right here. So you go over here and you go up, oh, March, eight, uh, June, there's the, the next quarter there, 2017, September, and then oh, and then it drops off and then back up here again, March, June, uh, September drops back off again. Oh no. And then we got June again, revenues higher, and then they drop off. So very seasonal for them, which is weird. You wouldn't think trash companies are seasonal in nature, but um, yep, sure are. Um, other than that, I think I've covered everything and then some a little bit today. If that doesn't get you to hit the subscribe button for me, you know, you know what I mean? Create another account and, and then hit the subscribe button. Then, then go have somebody create another account. Help us out. I don't think I'm supposed to say that. I love it. Uh, I'll take your questions as things uh, catch up here, and then we will wrap it up for the day. I uh, hope you learned something. That is the goal. We like to teach here. Um, yeah. We got the 10-year. Yeah, that's uh, continuing, right? Got a little bit of a break today with a slight bounce, but if you look at the 10-year, 
Bonds in general, slight recovery today, but we're well off highs, man. I mean, the rates are considerably higher uh, over the, call it the midterm there. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate. What's the best trading platform? I think it depends on what you want to do, right? Um, how active you are. I like uh, TD Ameritrade. I, I don't have an affiliation with them or anything because I kind of feel like if you're just beginning, it's not overwhelming, but if you really want to geek out and you're like super into it, darn near professional, um, they have everything uh, that you could want to do there. Yeah. Hit that like button twice, man. Nice. Can you do that? That's something, yeah. All right, yeah, do it. I like it. I like that attitude. I like it. You just got with Fidelity. Yeah, it, you might be more active then, and that's your frustration. Not really the best one for... Uh, being active fidelity uh you wanted to make a bet that mortgage rates will rise over time is there a way you could do that oh there's so many ways you could do that you could make a bet against home builders the construction industry down to sherwin williams right because people were less likely to buy homes when they buy homes they would maybe paint the walls i mean that's an odd roundabout way of doing it uh, you could bet on rates if you want you could actually play bond bond futures um yeah, I mean, it depends on whether you kind of, they would call that a synthetic play, right? So do you want to be direct and play rates? You, of course, can. You could, you could uh, in that case, you could just, you know, play the bonds. I don't know how else to say it, right? You could just participate directly, kind of like oil. With oil, you can uh, obviously trade oil itself physically using futures. You could use an ETF. There's not many good ones, actually. Um, you could play individual stocks or stocks that would be affected by higher oil prices, short those like airlines or whatever. Um, so it depends on whether you want to go that synthetic route and play the stocks affected by higher rates or actually just bet on higher rates. Um, yeah. Uh, you got one TD. Is there another? Uh, I would test them out, see if you like it. There's a ton of them. Yeah, I, I don't know. You got to be. You got to tell me. What are you looking to do? Are you a uh, foreign exchange futures trader, trading currencies? Are you a Bitcoin person? Do you like to trade crude oil futures, gold futures, options? Do you want to buy them, sell them? Are you just a stock trader? Do you need the fractional shares? Do you not care? So there's. I mean, I I'm not just going to rattle off a bunch of uh, brokerage firms. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you got it. Um, if you remove, hey, if you remove, yeah, that's right. If you hit the thumbs up button, it takes it back, man. Hit it three times. That's what you got to do. <laughs> Bitcoin, everybody, I love the bit Bitcoin. 52,700 and change. Yeah, that is parabolic there. I love it. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't really care, I guess, but... Not a, not a Bitcoin person. Does it look like uh, Starbucks is going to break out? Um, preferably, it would wait. So what, what just happened there? So you had a nice clean uptrend, and it broke down. This one day, with all that volume, what do you think is happening on that day? That's people taking their profits. They had a good run. They saw it break a technical support area that people like to look at. And they said, all right, I'm out. I'll, I'll take the money. And then immediately, they were proven wrong. Well, you don't expect that to run all the way back up to highs, then duplicate that move and move to new highs. So you kind of want it to just do nothing for a little bit, personally. I mean, if I could, if I could have any, if I could have any uh, preference, yeah. You guys are a little cold in Texas, I see. That's weird. That is weird. It'd be a matter of time. It'd be 110 degrees there. Enjoy the enjoy the cold while you can. If as long as you're safe, right? You don't want people to get hurt. Um, I love it. Bed, Bath & Beyond, down on the day. There we go. Yeah, this is, I mean, what What do you want? Like, That's like saying, I'm going to buy AMC. What do you, th what do you think is going to happen? Uh, same with Bed, Bath & Beyond. This is where it should be. It should be right in here. It's where it should have been the whole time. This is just that uh, black swan event. It's over. The volume is gone. Everybody's moved on. It's not going up. You're not going back to those levels, so uh, don't um, don't do that. The company is doing great and actually making great strides and changing over to a digital model. Um, I love what they're doing, but this is what they're worth with what they're doing. They're not worth fifty dollars a share. Yeah, I love it. 
You think it's strange you don't play Bitcoin? I don't care if it was an individual stock. Right? I w if this were an individual stock, I wouldn't be playing it. Because the question is, what, what are you going to do if it falls? At what point do you get out? Unless you're just holding forever. You know, I, I buy that. You go, I'm, I don't care. If it goes up or down, it doesn't matter to me. But if you're trading it, you're trading, you're essentially playing Jenga, and you really only have one or two blocks left before the thing tumbles. As long as you know that you can pull that block out and put it on top without a tumble and keep playing. But uh, you're, you're playing with something that can have severe down days in, in no time at all. As long as you're ready for that, that's that volatility is the biggest thing. That, that gets people, man. You want to know if you're uh, messing with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, and it's exciting. I mean, I, I don't uh, disagree there, but it uh, doesn't matter to me. I, I don't like things when they get that extended. That bothers me. Makes me nervous. Hey, um, I'll wrap it up there. I appreciate you watching. Uh, we'll call it a day. We'll be back tomorrow to do this all over again. It'll be Thursday already. Crazy. Let's see if the market can go uh, three for three on the average performance for President's Day week. Uh, I'll be back to talk about it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.